In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the new single eyeshadows from Odin's Eye. Odin's Eye is one of, if not my very top favorite eyeshadow brands. So I was really excited when they announced that they were coming out with singles and there were so many beautiful eyeshadows to choose from. I have eight of them here. Two of them are from the Multichrome line and the rest are from the Shimmer line. So I'm going to be swatching all of them for you, doing some comparisons where relevant, uh, and also showing you how I did this eye look using a few of the shades. So if you'd like to see all of that, just keep on watching. Before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to consider doing so if you like this video and you like my content. I like to focus mainly on high-end luxury and some indie brands like Odin's Eye. And I like to do a combination of reviewing and demoing new makeup, but also dipping into my collection and playing with my older makeup. And I also film in completely natural light and don't do any color editing on my videos. So one of my goals with my videos is always to try and show the products as clearly and accurately as possible. So if all of that sounds good to you, I would love for you to consider subscribing. So now let's get into these single shadows. In addition to the single eye shadows, which are magnetic by the way, so they'll go into magnetic palettes, they also brought out little single cases if you wanted to just have one eyeshadow in a single case. It's just this little plastic case which is magnetized so you can pop a shadow right into that and have it nice and compact and protected in the case. Uh, they also brought out 12 pan empty cases as well and that's what those look like. So again, they have the magnets in there so you can fit your shadows in. And there's also actually a little space in the cover here and they give you a card that you can pop right into that space if you wanted some color and not just to have it see through. I'm thinking about kind of customizing my own and just cutting a card and doing some artwork on it. I think that would be fun too. So lots of options there or you can just leave it clear like that so you can see everything that's inside the palette. As I mentioned in the intro, I got two of the multi-chrome shades, and I think there were 12 in total of the multi-chromes, and then all of the rest of the shadows in this collection are shimmers, and I got six of those. But I wanted to start with the multi-chromes. The first one here is Isabella, and I did use this one on my eyes today, so you'll be able to see it in action. But you can see on the screen it's pulling like a pink color but i want to try to get the shift through here so there's kind of like a bronzy gold shift uh, and there's also a green shift which i think you might end up well you can kind of see it there but you'll probably end up being able to see it a little bit better um, when i actually put it on my eyes and when i do the swatch the feeling of this is very very creamy very smooth it almost feels like a cream shadow although it is a powder and by the way, this is the little packaging. They just all come in this little plastic clamshell. So even if you didn't want to buy the single containers, you can still secure this really nicely in the plastic clamshell that it comes in. So there's Isabella. You can see the shifts a little bit better that way. And here it is in the swatch. Super shiny, super smooth really gorgeous. What Isabella actually reminded me of most once I actually experienced it in person is this shade from the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. Uh, that's the shade Vision. It's definitely different but I just want to look at them compared to each other so there's Vision. You can see that Vision is more of a purpley pink where we have kind of a warmer peachy pink going to almost a red in the Isabella shade. And then the green that Vision flips to is a little bit of a cooler green actually than in Isabella. So they have kind of a similar range of colors in both of these shades, but just kind of different versions of those where you're getting a little bit more depth and coolness in the Natasha Denona and then you have kind of a warmer version of it um, and a little bit lighter with Isabella. And the other multi-chrome I got is this beautiful red one, which is called Leon. Now this is not really a multi-chrome in the sense that it doesn't actually like flip multiple colors. 
It is mostly just the red with a deep black base. And this one also feels very creamy, not as creamy as Isabella, but still very soft and creamy. And I just couldn't resist this one because I think this is quite a rare type of eyeshadow shade to be able to get. It's a true red. It's not pulling pinky at all. Again, super pigmented. And if I blend it out there, you can see a little bit more of that black base coming through. And I have to compare it to Blitz Flame in the Pat McGrath Mothership 5 palette. I think this is really the only shade that I have that makes sense to compare. There's Blitz Flame. So you can see Blitz Flame is a little bit of a more muted color. It looks a little bit more dull. The finish of it is also more dull, so it's not as kind of bright and shiny as Leon. It almost looks more like a kind of satiny, rusty red in comparison, but it does also have a dark base just like Leon. The first shimmer, which is one that I also use today in my eye look, so you'll see that in the demo. This is Mia. There's this beautiful pink. I find this type of shade actually really difficult to find among my palettes, so that's really why I wanted to pick it up. I love pink. It's one of my favorite colors, but also because I just find it kind of difficult to find this type of a color and to have this beautiful finish and knowing that the Odin's Eye shimmer and metallic formulas are definitely in my top two favorite shimmer metallic formulas. I also love the Pat McGrath. I'd say they're the other in my top two, um, but the Odin's Eye really stands up to Pat McGrath. So there is Mia. I'm super happy with this shade. It's a true, kind of cooler pink, kind of like a bubblegummy type pink, but not too purpley. And then it has this beautiful cool toned reflect, which I really love as well. And I thought if I was going to have anything really similar to this, it would be in the Hella palette from Odin's Eye. So this is the most similar metallic shade and it's really quite different. So I don't think I'm gonna bother swatching that. You can see how peachy that is compared to how cool and truly pink. Mia is. But then I also thought of the Huda Rose Quartz palette and the shade right here. So I'm going to compare that. That's the shade Joy. And I also just pulled out my Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette, which has some pinks in it. So let's just see if that has anything worth comparing. Actually, this shade right here is not from this palette. That's from the Retro palette but I replaced one of the shades in Retro Glam with that. So that's a different shade entirely as well. It's much uh, warmer and it's more of a topper type color. Um, and then this one is really the only other comparable shade. I can do that one, although I think it's gonna be a lot deeper and maybe kind of more reddish looking. That is the shade Flare in the Retro Glam palette. So there are those two shades. There's Joy from the Huda Rose Quartz palette. Much lighter, uh, seems to be a little bit less opaque as well. It's less creamy, so quite a different color. It's really the main thing is that it's lighter, but I think those would go together really nicely because they have a similar undertone. And that's one of the other nice things about having these offered as single shadows is that I find it just makes it much easier to pair with a larger palette or with other eyeshadows when you just have it in a little single form. It's not a big deal to pull it out. It doesn't take up a lot of space on your counter when you're doing your makeup. And so it's convenient in that way too. Now here is the Natasha Denona shade. That's actually looking more similar than I expected to, but it is still different. So you can see that we're still getting a lot more coolness from the Odin's eye shade and a lot more kind of a reddish pinky warmth in the Natasha Denona shade. Next up is Chloe. So there's Chloe. It's a kind of muted purple base with again, a really strong, beautiful, bright, cool toned, almost silvery reflect. I would consider this a lilac purple. 
I'm comparing this to Wonderful in the Christmas Eve palette. Wonderful is not as pigmented. It feels almost more like a putty where Chloe does feel very smooth and creamy, but not putty-like and it's a little bit more pigmented and opaque. The colors are somewhat similar though, but I will say that Chloe has definitely a stronger base pigment and then it's almost like a separate reflect, whereas the base pigment and the reflect seem a little bit more integrated in the one from the palette and also that different texture. So it appears a little bit kind of thinner and a little bit more semi-transparent on the skin. Next up is Nora. I also used this in my eye look today. This one does have a little bit more of a putty feel. You can see the texture in the pan there, but it's very pigmented. And again, we have this beautiful reflect. This one does feel a little bit more like a putty cream. And if you're looking for a wet look shade, this is the one. This is a perfect champagne shade for me because it does have a little bit of depth in the base there, but the reflect is just so bright and it's almost like a silvery toned reflect. So I love to have that cooler toned champagne because I find most champagnes are a little bit more on the warm side. I'm comparing that to the Diamond Eyes Pop Shot from Charlotte Tilbury, which is another wonderful single champagne colored shadow. The Charlotte Tilbury feels more like a proper powder, but they're both super bright. If you look at the base, you can see there's more brown in the base of the Charlotte Tilbury, where it's a more cool toned base on the Odin's Eye. The reflects are kind of similar, but you're getting a little bit more warmth with the Charlotte and a little bit more coolness with the Odin's Eye. Next up is Kevin. This is the only green that I bought from this launch. There were a number of very beautiful greens and really great variations of green, but I felt like I had enough of kind of all of the other ones or they were colors that I probably wouldn't wear but I thought Kevin looked so interesting. So it has this kind of bright, almost limey green base you can see there, very yellowy green on the base, but the reflect is essentially a blue. It's a very kind of blue leaning turquoise or aqua shade. And I just thought it looked unique, definitely something that I don't have and such a fun green to add to my collection of greens. There's actually a bit of a purpley reflect in there as well, in addition to that blue. Very, very beautiful. And I wanted to compare that to another Charlotte Tilbury single. This is the Emerald Eyes Pop Shot. We're dealing with the same kind of textural difference that we had in the last two, the champagne shades. So we have a more traditional powdery feel on the Charlotte Tilbury. And although there are similarities in that there's a green and a blue note and a purpley note even in the Charlotte Tilbury as well, but again, they're kind of like different versions of that range of shades. So you've got uh, a cooler base. It's kind of actually a gray base on the Charlotte Tilbury one, which is flipping to the green, the blue, and the purple. It's a little bit of a deeper shade and just cooler overall as well. Just two shadows left. This one is the shade Robert. So there is Robert, another stunning one. This is almost like kind of the deeper version of Chloe. I'm gonna swatch Chloe next to it because they both have that kind of cooler toned purple base and then really bright cool reflect. There you can see the base colors and the reflect. I think those would look incredible paired together. And I also wanted to compare Robert to this shade right here in the Hella palette from Odin's Eye. This is the shade River and this is actually a multi-chrome or a duochrome. So it's probably going to look a little different, but I thought it would be the closest thing I could compare. 
So definitely a warmer purple base on River. And just a warmer feel overall. There's a lot more pinkiness, I think, in River. And the last shadow to show you today is James. And I also used this in the demo today. So James is a really lovely bronzy shade. I feel like I can almost see a little hint of a slightly greenish undertone there, but it is more of a neutral type bronze. Again, incredibly shiny. And I think actually the best comparison I have for James is this Lisa Eldridge liquid Lurex shadow in the shade Anias. So let's see those. I can see similarities, but they're definitely different. Anias has a cooler toned base, maybe pulls a little touch more green. Looks like it's a little bit of a lighter shade, although when you angle them like that, you can see the depths of tone of the bases there are actually pretty similar, but I think maybe Anias is just a little bit thinner as well, so it doesn't look quite as strong and opaque as James. I also decided to pull out Titania from Lisa Eldridge, although I think it's going to be a little bit warmer. Okay, it's actually closer than I thought, but I do definitely see much more gold in Titania, at least in the reflect there. Or I should say a warmer gold, more yellowy gold reflecting in Titania. And Titania is a little bit deeper actually in its base. So now that I've shown you all of the shades that I got, I wanted to show you the demo of this eye look, so I'm gonna roll that now. So, so far, very good with all of these shadows. Of course, I haven't had a chance to use them all on my eyes yet, but I feel like I could get a pretty good idea of how they work just by doing the swatches. And so I hope the swatches and comparisons were helpful. I'm really happy that this is a permanent collection. I know that Odin's Eye often does a lot of limited edition releases and their limited editions are for real. I think once they're discontinued, they're gone for good. So it's really nice to have these ones that are going to be sticking around for some time. And although I know a lot of these are sold out right now, they should be coming back into stock and being available for a long time. So that's great. The Odin's Eye eyeshadows in general, including the mattes, but I would say especially the shimmers and metallics, those shiny formulas that they have, are truly one of my ultimate favorite eyeshadow formulas. And I think they do colors really beautifully and there's no exception with these beautiful colors in this collection. I think you could see 
from the swatches just how shiny they are. One of the advantages that I see above the Pat McGrath shiny shadows with these ones is that I very seldom get any fallout with these Odin's Eye shadows. They have a creamier texture, but still have the ability to give a really beautiful, bright and dimensional, very special shine. Uh, the Pat McGrath, of course, have the ability to do that as well, her special shades, but a lot of those do tend to give me fallout. They have a very different texture with the Pat McGrath's feeling a lot drier and the Odin's Eyes feeling a lot creamier, which I suspect contributes to the fallout versus no fallout thing. They have different looks, so you don't get the exact same type of effect from the Pat McGrath special shades that you do from these various shimmery formulas from Odin's Eye, but I think they're equally special in their own way, in the way that they look and perform on the eyes. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. Did you pick up any of these single shadows or do you have your eye on any of them? I'd love to hear about that. I know that Odin's Eye is an indie brand, so it's not as accessible as a lot of other brands and a lot of other brands that I tend to review like Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, and so on. But these are really worth a try if you're into eyeshadows. And I think it's great that we have a good selection of more neutral tones and a lot more colorful tones as well in this collection. So that's it for me today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.